So welcome back to the Empowering Family Hub podcast. I'm your host, Joanne Callahan. Today on the show, we have the amazing Juanita Duke. And I've known Juanita for a while now. She's an entrepreneur, she's an investor and a wealth coach. And she is gonna be talking to us all about how we can change our perceptions about wealth. And wealth is not just about money, it's so much more than that. Juanita is gonna be talking to us about investing as well and how to really make your money work for you. And she's really passionate about making this wealth information, this education available to all people, regardless of their current financial situation. But before we dive in, please like this video, share with your friends and family. This information could really help to empower them too and their families. And also subscribe to the channel for more upcoming videos like this. So let's get on with the show. Juanita, you are very welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you so much for having me on. I'm, I'm really looking forward to chatting with you today. Thanks, Joanne. Brilliant, brilliant. So am I. Juanita, before we actually dive in, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and tell us why you've gone on this journey. Because, Juanita, I know that you've had many other businesses before and now you're a wealth coach and investor. And tell us why you're passionate about that area and a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm from Northern Ireland, um, spent most of my life there, but I've very recently moved over to England because uh, my daughter and my grandchildren are here. And I thought if I wanted to be a full time kind of um, grandmom and involved in their lives, I would have to go where they were. Um, so that's what brings me to England. Uh, yeah, I'm from a business background, not originally when I was um, as I grew up, it was all about going to school, get some good qualifications, get a job, work nine to five, get a pension. And that's kind of what I grew up around. But then kind of when, when I was about um, maybe around 17, I got a job working in a petrol station and it was just a part time job. But uh, and this was back in the days when it wasn't self-service. You had to actually go out in the wind and the rain and the snow. There were no canopies. Yeah. And you had to people sat in their car and you went out and they said, yeah fill her up with a fiver or something like that, you know, back back in the day, and you'd stand there filling their car. And I used to get chatting to people because it was a nice day. People would get actually get out of their car and talk to you. And I began to notice that there was a lot of difference between there was people rushing around at like half eight in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning. And then there were these other people who came in in the middle of the day, they had really lovely cars. They talked about going on fabulous holidays. They were nicely dressed and it just seemed very different. And I, I, in the end, when I got talking to them, I realized that most of them were business people. And I appreciated that having a business gave you a lot more freedom. You're working for yourself. Um, you weren't kind of on that treadmill. And that's where my interest first began in there being something different to the nine to five uh, and having a job. And yes, I've, um, since that time, which was a few decades ago now, I've tried lots of different things, you know, working for people, working in the corporate world as a, a retail sales manager, a trainer, um, a tele sales manager, lots of different roles. But really, I think what I've enjoyed most is my entrepreneurial journey where I've had my own businesses. And um, more recently, um, I realized that I was like a lot of other people that, yes, I had earned money. I had good businesses. I'd sold a business and but I still didn't have an awful lot. I hadn't anything really substantial planned for my future. And that's when I got interested in learning about how what I needed to do to make my money work harder for me so that I did have some sort of financial security going forward. Because when you're young, you don't really think an awful lot about mm. Absolutely. retirement and how, how you're going to fund this life, you know, when, when, cause as a lot of entrepreneurs, you don't really have um, kind of that. Haven't yeah, really that, that yeah. And so right. that, that's, what, that's what got me to where I am now learning about money. Yeah, and you know something, Juanita, as well, and I can hear when you were talking about when you were working the petrol station and you noticed a, a difference in behaviours of certain people and, you know, they were the, the business people who were behaving differently, if you like, and you were questioning what is that. Um, 
And then I know that you yourself, you've been through the whole entrepreneurial journey as well. You've had many different successful businesses as well. And one of them was the, 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 the doggy daycare one that a lot of people know you for that one as well. Um, and yeah, being an entrepreneur can teach you so much more than just business, I think. And you, were, you said in school, you were taught to go out and get a job and get a pension and all that kind of, and that's true for most of us, for many of us. And and still today, you know, the schools are, were taught the same way as we were maybe, I don't know, 30 years ago when I was growing up anyway. But yeah. entrepreneurship, I think, is a, a very special skill that can help us to deal with life as well as business as well. And the money mindset that you were talking about as well. Tell us a little bit about, um, tell us a little about the type of work that you do and how you help people. Okay, well, first of all, we, we start off with, with an understanding of where people are at the minute. So we're looking at their finances to see how much they've got coming in on a regular basis and how much they've got going out. And then what they can do with, you know, how much of that, looking at budgeting and how much of that they can afford to set aside to put into investing. And investing is what I teach people about. Mm. And I think a lot of people are intimidated by the term investing. They see it as something that only men in pinstripe suits and briefcases walking about the city are involved in investing. Yeah, but and it's pretty scary. Like um, when I was, when I heard about investing and trading and all this, and you know, there's obviously a difference, but um, it can come across as intimidating and scary. Yeah, because it's like risky and all of this. So yeah. yeah. Well, I think that comes from a lack of knowledge about what, what it actually is. And yeah. because we weren't taught about it in school and, and unfortunately still not taught about it, people think it's more important to teach us about geology and rocks and things like that, where actually money skills are what we all need, um, particularly great. in times like that. And I think when I was at school, it was about a job for life. And that's why we were steered in the direction of qualifications and the, and the good jobs but as we know now over the last few decades there is no such thing as the job for life you yeah, know absolutely. Even, if you, even if you went into you know places like the bank and the government it's still not secure and I think that's when more people got into entrepreneurship because you were kind of in control of your own destiny yeah um, and in, when I was working you, like you you never thought you'd lose your job like you were I, I remember I was working in a company I started in 1990 and um up, up until 2006 like you, you I thought I was going to be there for life you know unless I handed in my notes I was definitely going to be there there was no such thing as people been laid off yes and it was only in 2007 2008 that you know with the, the crash that happened when people were starting to be laid off then and it was like oh, you know people holding their breath and what am I going to do and this that the scary it was scary because there was a lot of uncertainty then and with the entrepreneurial ship and it's completely different and these skills um, and I think you know when we're in school it's all survival based kind of education it's a scarcity kind of a mindset um so yeah so so tell us a little bit about the the entrepreneur and and what you do go on keep going sorry uh you mean about what I'm doing at the minute yeah, yeah. So basically, I teach um, I teach clients either on a one to one basis or in a, a group mastermind program um, how to. Um, I think the most important thing that we, we start with is having multiple streams of income. Anybody that is wealthy has multiple streams of income, and that's why if you're in a job and your job disappears, you need to have a plan B. So you could be in employment and looking for a plan B. Or you could be an entrepreneur like myself and have lots of different um, sources of income. Yeah, got so um, sorry, sorry, and if, if, if something happened, if something happened in your job, so there's another source of money coming yeah. in, and that's the whole idea, isn't it? Yeah, you don't want to leave yourself in such a vulnerable position as a lot of people have found recently that when you only have one stream of income, you're leaving yourself very vulnerable financially. So the first thing we do is we look at what other streams of income can you 
add because you've got earned income, which is either you earn from an employer or if you've got a limited company, then you're, you're drawing a salary from your own company. So that's earned income that you have profit income. So somebody like a joiner or a gas fitter or something like that, that um, has a certain amount of expenses and a certain amount of income and, and they, they keep the profit, that's profit income. You have residual income from things like network marketing businesses, royalties if you write a book, um, affiliate incomes, dividend income, which is income that you get maybe from investing in shares, um, capital gains income, and that's when you buy something and you sell it for a profit. So that could be property, that could be bullion like gold and silver, um, it could be shares, could be artwork. So there's there's lots of different types of income. Mm. And it's it's about adding as many streams as you can. And then once you have that income, looking at ways that you can invest it. And we teach people to invest in four different areas. And that is business, property, shares, and cash, and cash being gold and silver, or things like peer-to-peer -peer lending. Okay. And the reason why we teach them to invest in those four categories is for stability, because you know, in the times, you know, maybe in the last crash, 2008, whenever it was, and property prices plummeted, if all you'd ever invested in was property, then a lot of people came very, very unstuck. Mm. But in the markets, there's always something going up when something else is coming down. So for example, if you did property and as it went down, then gold and silver goes up uh, at the same time as properties coming down. That so makes you, sense. Just kind of, you get a balance. So that's what we do. We teach people to be very careful with their investments so that they're, they're balanced um, as best as possible. And you that's used the word risk earlier. There is a lot of risk as a term that gets used a lot when you see like um, maybe people that are teaching you about trading online and things like that. There's always the risk warning. And I think that adds to the fear. But you yeah, know I was going to say that. Yeah, it does. Talk to us about that. Yeah. But actually, the biggest risk is not doing anything. Yes. You know, that is more risky to you than learning about how to invest safely. Yeah. And um, something else as well about that, the whole risk, risk can be very emotional as well. And that's what whole, and we're in, when we're in that space of fear, um, I know for me, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of me personally, I'm sure a lot of people have experienced. So I would, I'd be afraid of losing. I'd be afraid okay. of losing it. Um, so that's an emotional attachment kind of, you know, to, and they talk about you know, they talk an awful lot about emotional attachment to money. Um, and I suppose it could be true for anything, um, you know, material things that we have as well. And that's why people hoard and uh, why holding yeah. on accumulating so much stuff, right? And we can do that with money too. We can hoard money and keep it under our mattress and be afraid to spend it. So what's mm -hmm. going on there in people's mindsets? Um, well, I think it comes from a lack of understanding and a lack of education. Yeah, it does. Yeah, really. That that's what it comes from. It's like anything, you know. If you've never cooked a dinner before, and somebody said to you to cook a dinner, you'd be going, "Oh no, I, I wouldn't be able to do that." But once once you've done it a few times, and you understand that it's actually not, it's not that difficult. You just it's just something you haven't done before. Um, but once you've done it a few times, you think this is no, this is easy. I I can make dinner. So it's just another skill, like any other skill, basically. Yeah. That makes so much sense uh, having an understanding because and i say this a lot to people you know that i teach people about sleep and i say to people you know um there's so many people out there that are ignorant through no fault of their own they just don't know the benefits of sleep and how to work it to optimize their health if you like you know and working on i mean doing what you need to do habitually and you know getting into a routine and you know doing what you need to do to optimize your sleep and when people have an understanding they're going to value it and then they're going to prioritize it. Um, yes. And it's the same with money. So when you value money and your relatedness to money, um, you will understand and have more appreciation for it. And you'll learn how to work better, I suppose, uh, with all the skills that you're talking about. Yeah. Um, so when you think <laughs> if, if you just keep your money and do nothing with it or you put it in a bank, which is the safe option that, you know, which people think, but you're getting at the minute you're getting something like 0.02 percent interest it's like not absolutely nothing you know um on your on your money 
but inflation is eating it away. So if by doing nothing, you're actually going backwards in terms of the value of your money. And why would you want to do that if you could learn how to make your money work for you and bring you in 10% interest, 14% interest, 30% interest on your money, which is very easily achievable with simple, low risk strategies. I, and I appreciate the people don't want to take risks with their money. And that is why we show people how to be diverse with the things that they invest in um, to, minim to minimize what risk there is, because there's risks in life. There's risks of doing nothing um, as yeah. much as there is risks of doing something. And with education, you can make your choice and you can diversify those risks to, to keep them at a minimum. I totally agree. And there was something, um, and, and like it is, it's simple. Um, you know, you can say it's simple, it's not easy, but it's simple. Um, but educating yourself about it. Um, and when you know, when you understand, you have more power, you're more empowered, if you like. Um, and Juanita, so many people, you know, relationships, families, um, you know, people are saying things like, I can't afford this, and I think money grows in trees. And this is the relationship that many of us have with money, and it's causing so many relationship problems. And, you know, if you take the time if people take the time to find out how to work their money and make it work to their advantage it can it can create so much ease in your own individual life but also in the family as well and money is there to be spent I suppose and to um to get what you want and you know and, and when you have an appreciation as well and you have more you know respect for it and and I, th I think and a lot of people are starting to wake up to this and looking for help and ways that they can work money. One of the ways that I did, Juanita, was um, I got involved in affiliates, something really small and simple, a very small return, uh, just recommending other people's books uh, on yeah. Amazon and I'd get a small commission. And uh, so what, what ways can people start off to get on this path, Juanita? What what? ways with people tend to you know start off uh, you work on their money in different in all these diverse different ways that you're talking about well I, I, education is 100 percent the first investment you make before you invest before you invest in anything else you've got to invest in yourself and your education so that you're able to make the best decisions and choose the strategies that work for you because we're, we're all different we're all in different situations i work with clients who are already wealthy and they want to understand how to invest their money but i also work with people who are struggling just getting from one end of the month to the other and people who are in coming from a place of debt so it, different strategies will work for different people yeah. but so education is key and then generating additional income to allow you to kind of supercharge um, the speed at which you create wealth. And, and wealth is a good thing. A lot of people have are triggered by the word wealth. They think it's about greed. They think it's about having more than you need. But actually, yeah. wealth is actually about allowing you to, to improve the lives, not just of yourself, but the lives of your family, your friends, your community, your church. Um, Wealth is, wealth is good, not um, not yeah, a negative, right. not a negative thing. And I think I think because so many of us grew up with negative money stories, inadvertently, I mean, because we we get them from our parents, from um, perhaps whatever schools we went to, if they were kind of more into um, being poverty, you know, poverty and being humble and not showy or whatever. But those are all stories that make us who we are now. That, as you mentioned, the money doesn't grow on trees. There's so many of them, like, you know, when relationships, well, when money comes in the door, love goes out the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, you know, all yeah, of those yeah. sorts of, they all tend to be quite negative. And I know growing up with me, money wasn't something that was ever discussed at the table. Yes, there was things like, you know, if you asked for something, you would say, oh, no, we can't afford that. Or you knew not to ask because, you know. You'd be shut you'd, down. Yeah, because well, you, you think you are like, well, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's not your birthday type of thing, you know, you just didn't get extras. Yeah. Whereas wealthy people's family, money is discussed at the table, what the parents are maybe doing in business or um, 
it's know, open it's more it, open yeah, isn't it? and it's not about we can't afford that it's let's look at how we can afford that it's just different language but it really affects the mindset you, you know your mindset towards the abundance of money that's out there because there is plenty of money out there there is plenty for everyone no one needs to go without there are very simple strategies to take absolutely everybody from where they are to have an abundance of wealth you just need to learn the strategies and the best way to learn the strategies is to find someone who knows them and ask them how they did it yeah and, and i love that because now is the time Juanita. you know like the people are just suffering so much suffering unnecessarily and an awful lot is money issues and as you say there is enough that like there really is enough for everybody and it's your attitude towards and then you also mentioned about the language that we use so many people focus on i don't have enough or we can't afford so we're focusing on this whole thing that it's not there we're focused and that's all we see and that's what we're living with and that's the behavior yeah. that we're talking about yeah. where it's you have the money it's what possibility can we create now with this money they're looking more positively at abundance and creating more if you like and yeah. it's a totally different outlook and it's like we really do need to wake up and change our whole outlook on on money and and our abundance you know and um because as you say like it starts with the individual and understanding and having that information and then our effects our, our behaviors rather impact on a family level and a community level as well and um, so i think now more than ever um this information needs to be brought into schools for, ch for our children but for parents as well obviously they need to be educated first as well so that they can share that with their children and the children can see from their behaviors how they're being and what they're doing and you know and um, because that's we got our money stories from our parents and they got them from their parents so we need to rewrite those stories so that our children and their children don't grow up with exactly that lack mentality that we grew up with um and and from a more positive mindset that you know whatever you focus on is what you get more of and if you focus on abundance and generating uh, a much more comfortable life for yourself that's what you're going to get if you keep concentrating on the fact that you can't afford that's what you'll get you know? yeah absolutely and i love what you said as well Juanita. so there's there's loads of different areas and there's loads of different ways like you're talking about msis or multiple sources of income so there's loads of different ways that we can, you know, after we've gotten the education that we can invest in like silver and gold or property or um, rent. And uh, I've, I've, I rent a house at the moment myself and um, uh, loads of different ways. Um, tell us, Juanita, a little bit about you have, so you work one-to-one -one with people and then you also have a mastermind as well. I know we spoke previously, I, I, was, I was speaking to you around the whole silver and gold thing as well. And I found that absolutely fascinating um, because for me, you have to be, you have to really work with someone who knows their stuff and not like a cowboy. <laughs> and I learned that lesson. <laughs> yeah, there's a few of them out there. <laughs> So yeah, so it's really, really important. So once, so after you've gotten the education and there's loads that you can learn and it can be really empowering, like, you know, and whatever you're drawn to as well, like have fun with it too. And um, that's really important. Yeah, it is actually, it is actually, once you get started, it's actually a, a very interesting topic. And I personally, you know, I find it quite exciting, you know, um, just watching the investments grow, even though, for, mo for most of them, you do require patience and it does take time to, to kind of start to build and to grow. But even if it's only a slow growth in the beginning, it's still exciting to watch something growing. Whereas, you know, in, yeah, the, past, it's, it's in the past you were going backwards, you know, at least you can see you're going in the right direction. And that is really, it feels really positive, which just adds to the whole energy around money that, you know, you're in control and, you um, and, and, and you're causing that to happen like you know and it's going even if it's just something small it's going in the right direction but then after a while whatever some period of time it starts to compound if you like or it's it's it increased the, the the momentum the momentum, yes. momentum builds yes yeah yeah it's slow, yeah. slow start but then it really starts to build and it actually does not take long to build well but you just need to do the can you know take consistent action and you know really be focused on you know having that as your goal 
I love it, Juanita. I and and not, not just the financial goal. I think we need to be emotionally attached to the goal. And you can't be emotionally attached to a figure like a million pounds or half a million pounds. You need to look at, well, if I had that, what would that mean for me yeah. on a personal level? You know, would I be able to um, afford to pay off my mortgage? Would I be able to have more holidays, spend more time with my grandchildren? Would I be able to have a home abroad? And then really getting attached to what you could do with the money rather than the number, because a number is yeah. just a number. So that's, that's, yeah, that's really important because you need to have that, um, that desire that, um, to be able to visualize and see the outcome and, and head in that direction, like you have a target then as such, and just enjoy the journey along the way because we don't know how exactly, and you know, the markets change all the time, as you say. Um, so it's just important to have that end vision in mind. Start with the end in mind, isn't that what they say? Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, because you're going to hit bumps in the road. That is life. And if, you, if you're not focused on an end goal um, and emotionally attached to the end goal, Brilliant. then when you hit those bumps, you're just going to get knocked off course and you're going to find yourself sliding back into old habits. Whereas um, yeah. it's, it's just easier if you can kind of visualize where you're going and then just keep that laser focus on, on the end goal. Yeah. And I think that your, um, your cup is filled up, if you like, you're, you're uh, positively looking at this and working through it because as you say, there's lots of ups and downs and with the markets and you know, money incomes or whatever, the, the, the markets go in cycles, you know, every few years they go up and down and even they're up and down in between, but there's always this constant cycle, isn't there? Like every 15 years or markets yeah. crashing and coming back. Yeah. We, we're using investment cycles in investing to decide when is a good time to buy and when is a good time to sell and different elements will have different cycles. So if you're looking at um, property prices, they tend to go um, along with the recession in a country and I know like in the UK where I am we use, tend to have a, a recession like every 10 years or so and it just repeats itself if you look back in history every 10 years or so prices will be up and then they'll just go back down and then they come back up and they go back down and it's the same with gold but instead of you know every 10 years it could be you know much longer like multiple decades whenever you see kind of the, the gold and silver prices going up and down um likewise with shares every, you know there's just yeah no matter what it is you're investing in there will be cycles involved brilliant brilliant so to be aware of that and to to and you know what Anita, i can hear as well that it can be exciting in a sense because you can almost and I know like you don't know exactly what's going to happen. You can't tell the future, but you can almost forecast, you know, the probability of yes. something. And then you're also going to be looking at the economy of, of, of the, you know, what's going on, like, you know, with elections and um, COVID or whatever, like something that's after popping up in the middle of all of this as well mm -hmm. and how that's, but, but as you say, every time something goes up, there's some, something else, going down and there's always something going up and going down as you say there's that balance um and it makes that's, what, people, that's, that's what people say to me you know is now a good time to invest or, or or surely this isn't a good time to be getting into investing yeah that isn't true there's always something to be investing in because there's always something coming up as something's going down so um yeah. there's always yeah yeah, yeah. that's that's incredible yeah it's incredible so it's really just yeah i've been educating keeping your eye on the on the markets and the trends and um yeah i know i know there's a very good friend of mine who um loves this and he's he um he loves uh he writes everything down he, he accounts for everything that i can everything that's happening and he watches and he he gets really excited you know and he has um a good idea of what's going to happen and and if it doesn't he doesn't get upset about it or whatever he just moves on to the next thing it's like a game yeah like a game. yeah yeah, I, I mean, nobody has a nobody has a crystal ball. It is, as you say, probability. It's yeah. this is what's most likely to happen, but there's no crystal ball. That, you know, yeah. you just have to educate yourself. Um, That's really or, important. You yeah. know, be educated by someone who knows these things so that you can make uh, the right decision for yourself. That's brilliant. That's so brilliant. Juanita, I love the work that you're doing because, um, and I know you're involved with. Um, uh, oh, God, tell me the names of the other people that you're involved with as well, because it's a £2.73 club that you're involved yeah. in. Is that right? Tell yeah, us about 
Yeah, uh, we ha that's the monthly mastermind. We have a program. Um, it was so called 2.73 because if you saved up 2.73, which is the price of a cup of coffee or a pack of posh biscuits or whatever, if you saved up 2.73 a day, by the end of the year, you'd have a thousand pounds and you could invest that thousand pounds. And then the next year with the interest that you've earned, you're earning even more interest, which is interest on your interest, which is what we call compounding, which is one of the, the things that um, I teach people about, which is really, really powerful. Einstein said it was the eighth wonder of the world. That's right. And, um, so that's a monthly mastermind program. It's very, very affordable. Um, it's, you know, wealth coaching, money coaching, financial education doesn't need to be expensive. We show you how in in module one it's a monthly mastermind you, we just meet once a month online so you can live in anywhere i have clients in australia america uh, singapore uk ireland so it doesn't matter where you live um but we 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 meet once a month online and the very first uh one of the very first modules that we do is looking at those multiple streams of income looking at where you are now with your income and your expenses at no stage do you ever have to share that information with myself or anybody in the group. It's all private. So for anybody who's thinking, no, I don't want people knowing my business, that's not what it's about. It's important. You, yeah. you just come in and, and, and you learn. And if you want help with anything, then I can advise. But, you know, for, for people who um, like to be private about their money, because that's another thing we grew up with, not talking about our money. Yeah. So that's another mindset thing. Um, then that, that's not a problem. So we look at... Um, multiple streams of income and the, the plan is that from the end of month one you're generating enough extra income to pay the monthly cost of being part of the mastermind yeah so that's the monthly mastermind and then I also have the zero to millionaire um club which is 12 months of working with people on a one-to-one -one basis and that's right, a, okay that, that's a weekly call and that is not just the skills but it's the accountability making sure that they've actually uh, you know at the end of the call we're agreeing what they're going to do between now and the next week whether that's to that's really important finding extra income or it's taking action like opening their share account or reading a book whatever it is but there's you know literally 12 months of weekly accountability on a one-to-one -one program and that just kind of differs a little bit from the um the monthly mastermind call where you're part of a group okay. which is you know there's One's, one will suit somebody and the other will suit somebody else, both financially. Obviously, the one to one is um, going to cost more than the monthly mastermind. The monthly mastermind is nice in that you have a group of people going through the, everything at the same stage. But then other people like the flexibility of knowing it's just, you know, the focus is on them for an hour and they get on and get on with their um yeah, with yeah the, that's brilliant the path that they need to take this, this is something new that well I, maybe it's just my my antennas are only going up with it but but I, I haven't heard of very many kind of groups like this that helps people through their financial it's starting to pop up now i suppose um people are starting to wake up and you know everything that's going on at the moment and changing their mindsets about lots of things including money so i think this is a valuable service um, for people because people you know there's a lot of depression and worrying upsets and all the rest over not having enough money right and um and then having the lifestyle and you know the, the the luxuries and all that that we that we desire and that we want and it's not greed it's just it's it's really appreciating life and having the best possible life ever so i think it's a really really uh -huh. important and we're we're coming to the very end um Juanita and i just um want to mention you work with um uh, Hugh Hegarty is or he's part of your group and I'm a coach with Karen Newton International yes. uh, and Karen is a multi-millionaire investor who yes. um, lost her job uh, had to move from Australia to uh, in, to the UK and she decided to teach herself investing and she started off with 300 pounds in a credit card and within four years she had 10 million pounds worth of assets and she decided that yes she was from a money background in that she worked for the inland revenue she'd worked for the you know the tax authority she'd worked for in banking so she understood money um, which was um, a little yeah. step ahead of your yeah. average person on the street but still she still didn't know much about investing as such and she taught herself and then when she realized she decided she was going to retire and I think she was about 42 or something like that at the time and absolutely hated retirement I thought yeah. this isn't for me this is far too boring I'm going to teach other people I want my legacy to be to teach other people how to create that abundance of wealth for themselves because it was 
80% mindset yeah. and 20% very simple strategies and, and being consistent. So um, yeah, I'm one of her yeah. wealth coaches. Yeah, no, she, yeah I lo- I'm always inspired by that story. It's just so incredible like to hear that something like from our credit cards. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and and you don't you don't need to use a credit card because I know some people are very um wary of credit cards because the they're worried on them. getting into debt. So that just is a single strategy. It doesn't have to be the strategy. A lot most of my people in, in module one, we start looking at what we what can we sell from around the house, the things that we haven't used in the last six or nine months that we probably will never use again. Um so it's amazing how you can just make jam and sell them to your friends and family or whatever just to get you started um I love that so you can buy a little silver a little one ounce silver bullion coin for about 30 pounds so they don't you know and that's you started investing just one little coin a month it's yeah. not about big amounts of money it's little and often is is the key Brilliant. I love I love that I love that Juanita and selling stuff that you don't need because that's definitely something we can all do it my my son yeah. is here at the moment doing that for me <laughs> we, we've got to clear it now everywhere and I've got to find a loads of stuff I'm like oh I don't need it I haven't used it in two years we'll sell it um, yeah yeah and you can make so much money from that as well and then as you say small investments like silver so I love it Juanita tell us where people can find you um, you can email me at Juanita Duke at outlook.com and it's a hard one to spell it's j-u-a-n-i-t-a or you'll find me on facebook or you'll find me on linkedin or i'm sure if um if they contact you you could send them my direction yeah. as well if that's if that's easier for people who haven't got a, a pen to hand or whatever so. and i'll put all those links in the show notes as well so people can that would contact be you that way too yeah so really this is funny. going out on on audio and it's also going to go out on video as well so i'll go on the youtube channel as well so people be able to access the recording that way mm-hmm. but juanisa um i just want to ask you just to wrap up if you were to like now is a time you know we're going through so much constraints and upsets and worries and concerns what message, what empowering message can you can you leave people with to help them get their life back again around the work that you do? Like what's just that one empowering message that you can say? I think it's got to be invest in your education around money because there is an abundance of money out there. And if you're triggered by things like wealth and other people having money, just sit quietly with yourself and ask yourself, where is that coming from like why do you think the way you think that it's um it's all right for them they've got this advantage or that advantage or whatever where where is that coming from and then just um read books about money get in touch with me if you want to to learn with it with a coach but uh there is an abundance of money out there and it's most people who don't have wealth or don't have enough money it's to do with their mindset and their limiting beliefs that they don't they don't believe it's possible for them when it absolutely is possible for every single one of us and there isn't a single person who couldn't be better off financially than they are at the minute love it i just love that one isa because so many people have that you know how come you know keeping up with the joneses and all this kind of thing and it can cause so much stress and uh, jealousy and judgments and all of that and that yeah. just digs us into a bigger bigger hole and we're just not content and fulfilled in our life and I think that one question that you said ask yourself where is this coming from because again it's back to the stories and our upbringing and programming so yeah very very powerful ending Juanita and um, so with that Juanita thank you so much for spending the time and giving us all that valuable information and insights and telling us how people can work with you and have a fantastic day and thank you, Ronnie, again. Thank oh, thank, thank you for, for asking me. It's been an absolute pleasure, Joanne. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Ronnie. So take care now. Thank you. Bye.